Hey there, my name's Jonathan. I am the machinist lead for the Clarkson Formula Electric Knights, and I'm going to be giving you a tour of the Clarkson University Student Machine Shop. So our machine shop trains our students across eight classes, which we call MT classes. Each one is four weeks long and focuses on one set of machines that our students have access to in this shop. And when you come in as a first year student, you will immediately be able to start with the first class. And if your schedule works out well, you'll be able to get all but two of these classes done as a first year college student. And then if your classes work out schedule-wise, you'll be able to get the final two classes in your third semester as a college student, meaning you will be certified for six semesters with all of the machines that we have in this shop. Um, so now we can start moving in, and typically the first class is a basic shop skills class, which you do a lot of work over in this section here, which has band saws and belt sanders. That's what that's called. Normally during the year, especially once we have classes going, especially Lance who teaches these first couple of classes, he really focuses on making sure students know to be respectful with the machines, keep them clean, keep it nice so that when you come in and you start working on a machine the next day. So when you first start on these machines, you'll learn about your basic feeds, you'll learn about threading. Usually one of the first projects involves creating a thread that's both male and female and can screw into itself. And you'll do a few other basic things, you know, adjusting how fast your feeds are. You'll learn what all these different levers on the machines do. And then if you join a speed team and have a specific part that you need to make, that's really where you learn a lot more on these machines because if you have a specific thing you need to make, you might not learn that in the basic class, but now suddenly you find yourself swapping the jaws around on the lathe because you have a part that's too big or something along those lines. That's something that a lot of people ask about when they're first getting started or even I run the blacksmithing club here on campus and people will ask, what do I need to know to get started on this stuff? You learn the basics right from the beginning here and where you get into advanced stuff is when you join a speed team and you participate in a speed team, especially one of the core teams that are a vehicle team. If you're on one of the formula teams, you're on diesel sled, you're on Baja, those teams have complicated parts that you're constantly having to learn new ways to use the machines because it's not simple parts you're making. So once you get your first certification on the Acer lathes and you're able to use those, the next class that people typically take are the manual mill class, is the manual mill class. And these machines are right over here. We have three of them the same way that we have three Acer lathes. These classes start very similar to the Acer lathes. You learn your very basics right away. So you first learn how to indicate in a vise so that you have it square in your machining squarely. Then you learn about the different feeds and speeds and you learn about how you're gonna adjust, keep your coordinate system, blah, 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 mumbo jumbo. Basically, you learn all the basics in this class as well. You do some tapping and threading on a block as well, and you actually mill two blocks that have to slide together in that class. And then once you've finished the milling class, usually the speed teams do a lot of our work on these manual mills, especially prep work if you go to a CNC. One of the other things that's really nice about the way our shop is set up is you start with the manual lays, then you come to the manual mills. Not everyone learns right away how to manually machine things. And so even though the basic classes don't go too far in depth, you will get experience on these machines and it helps you a lot when you eventually move to CNC's. But manual milling, manual lathe work is not something that people always do anymore. And so it's a valuable skill to have, even if you're always gonna be working on a CNC once you get to that point it's always useful to know how to do it by hand because once in a while, especially if you're making a one-off part, it sometimes might be faster to manually mill something than it will be to throw it in the CNC, but you have to know how to do that to be able to do that. So once you finish taking the manual mill class, you have a branch in the tree of classes that you're able to take. You can either go to advanced lathes or CNC mills. Advanced lathes is typically offered one semester of the year I could be mistaken, but that one's usually a spring class. The next class that you would typically take is CNC mill. So we have three CNC mills that students are able to use in the student shop, one of which is a fourth axis machine, and the other two are Haas mini mills that have three axis capabilities. When you take the CNC mill class, you'll start with some of the most basic features on these machines. So you're learning your tool change operations, you're learning how to secure your holders properly, you'll use the onboard VPS system, which is just a very simple rudimentary system where you can make basic geometry like hex shapes, circles, squares, drill a few holes in specific coordinates, very basic level stuff. 
you'll start taking the Mastercam class, and Mastercam programming is one of the largest programming softwares that CNC machinists will use, in addition to SolidCam. And when you get onto Mastercam, that's really when you unlock the potential of these machines, because while VPS can do basic geometries to a limited degree, if you want to make something super complex like an upright for a Formula Wheels vehicle, which I have made four of at this point, you really need Mastercam to make complex geometries. And once you get into that class, it again walks you through some basic stuff and you end up making a coaster at the end of it, at least when I took the class. Once you finish the Mastercam class, you really get into the fun stuff. That's really when you want to be on a speed team because if you just have class projects once in a while that you're working on these machines with, you'll learn a little bit, but to really learn the ins and outs and to get some great experience, you have to join one of the speed teams because they will have parts that are complex and it's kind of like a research shop. If you go work somewhere professionally as an intern or somewhere else in a machine shop, typically they'll have you working on production. And when you're working production, you'll hit a start button and you're pretty much doing the same part every day. When you're on a speed team, it's pretty much like research parts every single day. You're making something different every time you finish a part. So you're not doing the same thing. And so you're making new shapes, you're making new geometries, you're finding new ways to make those shapes because you have to. And that's one of the best things about this setup is that you're constantly able to learn more and more advanced things to whatever degree you want to take it to. So one of the, one of the nicest things about this shop is that as a first year student, like I said before, in your first year you can get through six of the eight MT classes if your schedule works out for it. So you can have a basic knowledge on most of these machines right away. But I do want to emphasize that that is a very basic level of understanding and to really get into the more advanced concepts and things you're going to need to keep working on things. You're going to need to have new parts that you're making frequently, which you really get on a speed team. And so the real big advantage though is that you get to start learning on it and using these machines as a first year student. That's not particularly common. You don't always have a university where you're able to start making parts for a speed team as a first year student, at least not on a CNC machine. Granted, in your first year, they're not gonna be advanced parts, but by your second year as a sophomore, you're gonna be able to be running these machines, making things that are complicated parts. Whereas there are speed programs that we compete against when we go to competition, where they have so many people applying to join these teams that you're lucky to get on the team as a junior or a senior, or to get to go to competition as a junior or a senior, let alone be a first year student and you're running machines and making parts for your team here. So the next machines that you'll typically come over to work on are our LeBlanc lathes. We have three of these as well. These are your next step up from our small Acer lathes. They're a little more advanced. They have a lot more power than the Acer lathes do. And they also typically have a four jaw chuck on them as opposed to the Acers, which usually have a three jaw. We do have a three jaw for these, but we run the four jaw and so you have to learn how to indicate that we have a different threading system that you'll learn on and generally speaking these are just heavier duty machines that can do a lot better they hold things in a very rigid manner and um, it's it's the next step up in in learning what you're doing on a lathe before you go to the fully automatic cnc machine uh, one of the nice things about these machines is that you can really work on harder materials here. It's much more powerful and much more able to cut things like steel or hardened steel. It's a very good choice for that. And so there's just a lot of options and a lot more things you can do with these machines, really. Uh, once you finish with the LeBlancs, the next class you'll typically take is CNC lathes. We have two Haas TLs here. They are on the low end of what you can get in a CNC lathe, but they're a very good starting point. And so in this class, you'll typically start out with learning how to use a shape creator on these machines. Most of the guys on speed teams prefer to always use it. You can create whatever geometry that you need to on the shape creator. And then the last couple of weeks, you'll end up doing master cam and learn how to do master cam for lathes. Not everyone always uses it, but it is really good to learn on. It is a good opportunity to learn how to use master cam lathes. But generally speaking, like I said, a lot of people like to use shape creator and yeah that's really the main bit on these machines there's not always as much these machines don't always receive as much use but typically when you get into some of the more advanced parts for the speed teams like spindles on our cars we'll make them on these cncs and 
Once in a while you have other couple parts that need to get turned. It's really, these are much better for production where you have, for example, the wheel nuts on the car. We made all of them on here. If you need to make eight or 10 of them so you have spares, you'll just throw a bunch of them in here with a program and just keep loading the program in and you can keep going on stuff versus having to make it manually. So if you're someone that gets really into CNCing and you're really active with a speed team, one of the other things that we have is a fourth axis on our TM here. So typically you don't see students start learning or working on this unless you've been CNCing on the three axis for a couple of years at some point. It's usually the more senior machinists on speed teams that will start with this where you have a part that has geometry that requires a three plus one operation or a true fourth axis part. There is also opportunities to learn how to work on this as well. We've got all this hands-on stuff and you can do this as a first year student. It's not any of that, you gotta wait till you're a senior. No, come on in, you wanna put a hand on something, I have something for you to work on. And it's like that with almost every speed team. So next we have our welding area. So we have a bunch of different welding machines there as well as around the corner here. So we have MIG, TIG, and stick welding. You will learn how to do all three if you take our welding class here. There's also a plasma cutter as well as oxyacetylene torches. So really anything that you would need to do or want to work on in relation to welding or metalworking, you're able to work on in here. We've got MIG, TIG, and stick. And so all three types of welding you can learn how to do. And all of the speed teams need welders and will absolutely give you stuff to work on, especially when you get into chassis welding season. Baja, both ice and electric formula, all have a ton of welding that always needs to be done. And so you can get really good at welding quick as well. I mean, that's one of the big things about our whole student machine shop is if you are interested in it, there's opportunity for you to get really good really quickly if you're willing to put time in and continually work on continually more advanced parts.